Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Double Your Business show on Blab, also as the Healthy Business, Healthy Family show on iTunes. I'm your host, Leslie Hassler. I'm a business growth coach working especially with women entrepreneurs. I work with a few guys, too, but I have a, I have a soft, spot, soft spot for ladies in business. And we are here today to talk about the powerful secrets of creating predictable success. And I have a guest here who's Anna Malik. Again, I always want to do that. I always get tongue tied at the beginning, Anna. So sorry about that. No but we are going to have a lot of fun today. We're going to be talking about some tips and strategies, you know, um, sharing some personal experiences along the way. But it's really meant for you. So I'm excited, Anna. Um, let me tell our, our listeners just a little bit about you. Um, you are the host of the Mind Zone podcast, which is actually a fabulous podcast that was featured on the Huffington's Post. 15 podcasts that will leave you pondering life's big questions. Um, but you are also the director of education for the Book Yourself Solid School of Training. And for people that don't know that, that's based on the book from Michael Port, correct? That's correct. And then co-founder of moreclientsmorefun.com, which you've got some good stuff going on <laughs> over there too that we'll talk about later. But um, I love keeping the bio short and sweet and, and bringing you in. You know, what do you, um, is there anything else you want to share about yourself that I didn't mention that you think it's important for people to hear? Uh, that people are going to notice an accent. And if they are wondering where that accent comes from, I'm originally from Portugal, but now I live here in Phoenix, Arizona beautiful phoenix i did not realize you were from portugal i studied abroad <laughs> in spain and ah. portugal, we went to nazare is it nazare nazare next and to then, Lisbon. Uh, obviously mm -hmm. fatima uh, mm -hmm. so it was a lovely lovely little country there yeah. and whereabouts in spain since we are speaking about the european continent there whereabouts <laughs> in spain i studied at the universidad de salamanca um <laughs> You know that I live four years in Salamanca and I did my master's degree in Salamanca. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I didn't. I love Salamanca. We just went back for my 40th birthday a couple of years ago and I couldn't get back over there because evidently everyone in Spain stayed in Spain and the trains were booked. And But we got to do Madrid and Barcelona and I got to share with my family just How much I love Spain. So now I am just a little, we're having a little yeah. connectivity issues here, guys, but we'll make it through. So, Anna, we, we have shared yeah. things in common. Yeah. We didn't even we know. Realize. Both of us know what is Plaza Mayor. Oh, uh, yes. I love the Plaza Mayor. I also know uh, some really fun Spanish phrases, depending on who I'm talking to. <laughs> wow. My favorite was. My inner they crinkle. That's my yeah. favorite Spanish phrase ever. Because it yeah. just it yes. sounds fun. So welcome to the wonderful show. Wonderful to be here and thank you. It's really I enjoy your podcasts, the fun, the conversation, and what how much the things that we learn from listening to them. So it's my honor to be here. Oh well, thank you. Well, we are talking about some of these little known secrets so to speak. And, you know, I kind of teased our listeners with that, the little known secrets, but they're actually, um, they're not old or they're not new to the world. These are what I love about what we're going to talk about is these are just truths. I kind of say success truths out there that once you can become more proficient and practice at them, you know, you really do start to to see them impact your business. So we're going to be jumping a little bit all over the place, but I love that, uh, you know, you kind of come from the mindset era and you understand what that's going through. So I want to first start off and let's just talk about why um, success can be so challenging for entrepreneurs and people in small business and what they think the problem is, but what sometimes is really those underlying I issues. I think one of the biggest challenges is people... I, I, uh, or and I will include me in the people because sometimes I still have that illusion that uh, success yeah. okay we get there like it's almost there is a fork in the road that we arrive and we make a big decision okay we are going to be entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and we are going to be successful and once you make that first big decision and we give that first first jump Everything, okay, it can be a little bit difficult. There will be a hill, but after that, it's just roses. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, and I think the, the, the main, one of the first things that we have to understand of success is that success has many bumps. Even after we get successful, there are still bumps waiting for us. <laughs> it's part of the process. So it's not that the one side of the road is success, the other side is failure. Is There is failure, getting up and get successful and getting down again and up again and enjoy the ride. It is a ride. And I think that's a really good um, analogy. I know when I do some speaking, I have a slide that says most people think success is that straight angle. And my slide goes actually like it's hills and valleys and some of them are bigger than others. And, you know, and then you get into that yep. kind of plateau area, then you hit them again. Yes. It's like turbulence, right? It's kind of like turbulence on an airplane. We're bound to hit some turbulence um, in, in our, in our journey. Now, what do you see, you know, there was, I think, uh, Robert Kawasaki wrote, uh, the art of the bounce, you know, talking about resiliency in being an entrepreneur and the, that ability to bounce back and come back. Um, how, how do you, what are some, I guess, our, our steps, or our practices that help us be that resilient to kind of understand that we're going to have so ups and first downs. is that, that, that the ups and downs are going to happen. And I still have to meet one person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I meet young people and you can, sometimes we heard about kids that the 19, 20 year old that sells a company by 2 million and something like that. I still, they are in the eye of the ride. And uh, some of them will be amazing, successful people, but they have to learn also to navigate the bumps. So I think first is have the awareness that there are the turbulence is there and is part of the journey. Then I think for the resilience for an entrepreneur, mainly for solo entrepreneurs, we really have to have very clear why we do what we do. What, mm. Our why. Because, otherwise, because that is what yeah. keeps us uh, going when things are not going well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, for and sure. if we have clarity about why we do what we do and keep on track with them, it's easier to rebound. Mm. So do you have or do you suggest that somebody not just maybe write down that why, but even, you know, yeah. how do you keep that why so present with yourself uh, on a day to day first basis? Have, uh, identify it in a very clear way uh, and be part of uh -huh. your when you are building your business. I think we should build our business around our why. And um, I'm like you said mm. in the beginning, I'm uh, the director of education for the Book Yourself Solid School of Coach Training. And this model, the Book Yourself Solid model that was created by Michael Port in 2006 when the, book, the first edition of the book came out, uh, I, I really see everything from that. That is the lenses that I use to see business in general. And one of the, mm -hmm. we have this principle that, okay, first, if you want to have a good business that is resilient, you have to build a strong foundation. And the strong foundation yeah. has like four building blocks that really secures that is solid. Is have clarity about who your ideal clients are, who are the people with whom you do your best work. And then you want to mm -hmm. do what we call a red velvet rope policy. You want to build a business that attracts that people. And don't attract the other right. people so much. So you create a red velvet <laughs> rope policy. That is the building block number one. Right. Then there is the building block number two that is all about the personal brand identity, about the why you do what you do is one of the cores there. And I will go back there in just one moment. And then the third building block is uh, about... Um, oh, and now I, I changed the building blocks because I was thinking about the, 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 the personal brand identity that is so important for me. But if we go by the chapters in the book, the first one is the red velvet row policy. The second one is understanding why people buy what you are selling. That is really uh, about mm -hmm. defining the target market, knowing their needs and desires, identifying your number, big, the big number one result that you offer people. Then the third building block is the personal brand identity. And finally, the fourth building block is how to talk about what you do without sounding confusing or bland or like everybody else. So that is the structure mm -hmm. that you should have for your business. 
But for me, if I had to uh, think what is the, the one of these building blocks that is more important will be the personal brand identity because everything really has to come from there and from why you do mm -hmm. it. Because if you build a mm. business that is not in alignment with what you, why you do it, you are not going to add the energy to preserve or to keep going. So, exactly. so have exactly. that clarity. For me, for instance, for me is uh, my big why is about spending possibilities. I think so often people okay. limit themselves in so many ways that we really have to um, do things in a conscious and unconscious way and uh, plan our life in a way that we have opportunities to expand our possibilities. And for me, one of the ways is by mm. learning new stuff. Learning is a way of expanding yeah. ourselves. So I, I, for, for what I do in my business, helping other coaches, consultants, speakers to get more clients, uh, for me, mm -hmm. is expanding their possibilities that they, yes, they, can, uh, they were not born as entrepreneurs, many of them, or they don't consider themselves salespersons that they can learn yeah. how to sell their service because it's the way that they have to help more people, to make a bigger difference in the world. That is what they really want. And That's awesome. There's, and there's more I want to dig in there because definitely Amy, it was so funny. Amy and I were emailing back and forth about my why you know, because we're working on a promotional piece for my speaking. And I was like, you know what, I need to read it again. I need to make sure that I'm still on point yes. with that. Because this and I had another conversation this morning at a, a speaking engagement and was talking with the audiences. And she was talking about really like, she felt the need to shift and, you know, rebrand. So there's, there's one important piece that I always want to make here is, it's always an evolution. Yes, it's and evolution and there's a difference between making a 180 in your business and evolving your business it, totally but when that part of the business uh, uh, going back to michael port he always says that most of business problems are personal problems in disguise yeah. and i yeah. totally agree <laughs> agree yeah. with, with it and um, uh, we have to do some personal work that and personal development as as entrepreneurs and as solopreneurs we have to be willing to do some working our personal stuff. Otherwise, we are, are not going to be resilient and not going yeah. to handle when things are not going very well. And part of that process is also clarifying the why. And when we nail that out, when we know our strengths, our limitations, and why we do what we do, then things evolve, but it's always around the same teams. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that we are stuck in a place. No, it means that we are exploring places, but there is like a common melody, a common theme, mm -hmm. and people that are around us feel if they if we manage to transmit that in our marketing, even if we shift direction, people are going to feel ah, there's some logical here because it's yeah. part of the same theme, it's part of the same melody, makes sense, right? So that, that theme and variation kind of concept from music. Yes. It sounds different sometimes, but you can still hear, hear the melody um, and the resonance there. You know, it's so interesting because I know even in this is my second business and coming into this business, I had to go through a lot of personal stuff I didn't even realize I needed to go through. And but I had always come away from that concept, especially in my first business, that my the true power of an entrepreneur happens when you realize that everything that you don't like in your business has happened because of you mm -hmm. and because of that you can change it yes and for, and one of the the things that happen more often is that so people want to have their own business because they don't want to be have somebody else as their boss because they were yeah. burned out in the corporate yeah. world and all that they were burned out with um with that and then, okay, they, whoa, okay, I'm, this is my chance. I'm going to become my own boss. But then they become a boss that is worse than the boss that they were running away from. Yeah. And yeah, because that's all they knew. Yes. That's all they knew. And they have, to, they have to learn how to change. How can I become the boss that I really want to be of myself? Yeah. 
Because it's something else when somebody else is managing you and telling you you've got these deadlines, you've got that. And this is almost that self-discipline that you you think you're disciplined until you get into business and you really see how disciplined and focused. Amy's laughing over there because she knows you really have to come to terms with what you're not, you know, what you need to improve on from a discipline and a focus yeah. um, element because there's, there's so many things that are buying for your attention. Yes. And if you don't have the discipline to do the things, even though you don't want yes. to do them. Exactly. You know, that's, that's where a lot of people don't see the results because they're not disciplined enough. And then it's another secret of success is realizing that, yes, we are in a business that is in alignment with our why, that is what we love to do. But even like that, there are parts of our business that we don't like to do. Mm-hmm. And many times we have to do. It's like I say, I love traveling. I hate packing. But if I want to travel, <laughs> I have to I... pack. <laughs> and I still didn't find a way to delegating the packing. <laughs> That's going to say delegation is always key. Yeah, you know, but there, um, there are some things that even we cannot delegate. And it's an art. We learn yeah. how to delegate mm-hmm. a lot of things. And I bet that when, at least for me, when I start to work, we bring a VA in to work in a team. It helped me a lot to keep my business in a structured way. Uh-huh. Because I had to explain to another person, okay, what were my intentions? Cannot be just in my head. Nope. I had to verbalize it. Otherwise, we could not be working in the same direction. Well, and this is an interesting, um, interesting that we've gone down this road because one of the podcasts I was listening to on the Mindset Zone was that concept of dependence, independence, uh-huh. and interdependence. And I know with working with entrepreneurs, independence is one of those values that people hold so high for themselves. But truly to be successful, you have to start learning interdependence. Explain this concept between independence and interdependence for us. So this is from Steve Covey. I never know how to pronounce his last name. It's so from the seven habits of highly effective people. So it's one of the classics that so many of us read and for me, the big pearl is that, that is, is how the seven habits are not just, the, uh, there is a sequence there that has to do with this, that people, okay, everybody understands that if we are dependent, we like to be independent and by ourselves and it's so great. And I think it's like you say, uh, solopreneurs understand that I'm independent. Finally, I'm my own boss. Finally. But the secret for success is when we learn that we can be achieve more things when we are okay to become interdependent. It's not dependent. It's just not be about me, 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 but creating something is a we, and that allow us to reach more people, allow us to collaborate, allow us to work in a team, allow us to GV with other people, join venture partnerships and collaborations with other people. And that way, because we know who, you, who we are and what we represent, and it's not because we are in an interaction with other people that that is going to disappear, but it's going to allow our opportunity to amplify, to reach more people. And that is so, so important. It is. I um, had one interview with a good friend of mine that does um, turnarounds. She goes into billion dollar companies and helps turn them around when they start to fail. And she had that kind of concept of gone are the days when you can be successful in the silo. And I love that. But I, I use it all the time because it's just so true that I think we are shifting a lot um, into understanding how we can partner with each other and actually seeing it as strength building, not um, a, an admission of weakness. And that is something that you even, I work with many executive and leadership coaches and they are always working with that with their clients in mm-hmm. terms of leadership, mainly with people that work with people that transition. For instance, you have a salesperson that is the best salesperson of the team. And now the, they, the company decide to promote that person to be the manager, the sales manager. Right. And it's a very big step there. It's yeah. not enough to be good in what you do, to, to know how to manage other people on that. And usually people, when they are very good in what they do at that level, on the doer level, is the independence level. They are really very, how do you say, focused. 
They know what they have to do. They are determined. They are persistent and they go for it and they do it. But then when they become the leader, mm -hmm. oops, the rules are different. They have to learn a new skill set in order to be good in that role. That is a different role. And we as entrepreneurs, mainly when we were working in corporations before, what may, uh, uh, it's great, or they say some of the skills that we learn there is great, but then we have to learn all a new set of skills mm -hmm. to be successful as entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. Because I even know, you know, I talked about usually when people first generate a company or a business, their first step is to create a job for themselves. And that's where a lot of people get stuck. It's not an easy place to be profitable in. It's not an easy place to really make it as good of an income as you made in corporate. Um, and you have to move out of that and get into, you know, being a leader, being a manager, being an employer, being an entrepreneur. I think you can own a business well before you actually become an yes. entrepreneur. Um, we use that word entrepreneur all over the place because that's what mm -hmm. we identify with. But there's a mindset to an entrepreneur that a business center doesn't always have. So how, um, how do we go about really improving the mindset from a, a daily practice standpoint? So I think one of the fundamental things is the awareness component. Become aware and mainly become aware of our blind spots. Mm -hmm. uh, there are areas that we really, uh, if, um, if, like for instance, entrepreneurship. Uh, we have that many people, I work with loads of coaches and coaches don't identify initially so much as entrepreneurs because they don't feel that they were born with the entrepreneur gene. They, they never start a company. They were always working in a company, oh, yeah. somebody else. Uh, and they almost, uh, they are entrepreneurs by accident. Uh -huh. uh, and they, oh yeah, I have my own business. I just want to have a certain number of clients to be able to, uh, get more or less the same income that I was used to get in my job. So that is the mindset that they have. And uh, just, in, just becoming aware that uh, entrepreneurship is not a gene that you have to be born with. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are people that since uh, we have examples of kids that they are selling lemonade, they are doing this and that. But you also have many other examples of very successful entrepreneurs that didn't start like that. Yeah. That learn to become successful. And maybe they, they just want to have a practice and it's okay. But you, I think uh, the decision, the choice has to be made from a place that you are aware of your options, that yeah. you have options. And it's not because you were not born with that gene that you cannot learn some skills that will allow you to open new doors. Mm. So uh, just uh, when we think, oh, I'm not good at that. So be, be very aware of our own language, mm. even sales. Uh, again, uh, sales is something that coaches don't usually sales and marketing. Oh, I'm not a salesperson. <laughs> uh, sorry, if you have a business and if you don't do sales, how are you going to keep the business going? Mm -hmm. But I'm not a salesperson. I'm never, I'm, and I was never good at sales. Again, you don't have to be born with a sales gene. You can learn how to sell what you do, your service, in a way that is incongruent with your values. You don't have to feel icky. Yeah. No, you can do it in a way that is very congruent, that is very respectful, that people will not feel that you are pushing them, that people are feel that, oh, I want to know more about that. That is a conversation. You can learn these are skills, but you have to be open to the possibility that these are skills that are learnable. Mm -hmm. That's a really good um, thing to bring up. I think at one point in time, oh, a good year and a half or so ago on the blog, we posted this kind of image of a, of a hiker going you know, up a mountain, so to speak, and all the different things that the hiker would say to themselves on this journey. <laughs> what was really interesting is it, it showed like, how likely you were to be successful based upon what you were saying. Uh -huh. 
your self-talk. Your self-talk. Like I, you know, I'm a horrible salesperson. Well, guess what? You're going to be one because that's what you're setting your expectation to where, you know, it's some days it's like, you can't go, well, I'm a great salesperson. If you feel like you're a horrible salesperson, but maybe you could become an okay salesperson first. Or just, just, so sometimes just one trip because this the self-talk is so important so if we fall in that i'm not a good salesperson yet yet oh there's just a just add yet i'm not good in keeping my books yet yeah i'm not good at so every time that you go i'm not good add yet at the end yeah because you can learn or you can learn to delegate. Amen. You don't have to do it all. You don't yeah. have to do it all at all. I love that. So um, talk to us a little bit about, I know we've, we've got, this conversation is going really fast. <laughs> really oh my gosh. I love it when I'm like, wow, 30 minutes has already gone by. That's so much fun. But, you know, I want to... Um, I know you've got some things I want to make sure we have time to share and uh, and do it just being on your website um, and looking at things. You know, you do the work with uh, the book Yourself Solid, but you also have this more clients, more fun. Is that right? Did exactly. That? Yes. More clients, more fun is really is using the framework of the book Yourself Solid. So I got together with other two colleagues that are also book Yourself Solid certified coaches and we saw a great opportunity of LinkedIn is a great professional networking platform mm-hmm. that people have many, most people will have a profile in LinkedIn, but they don't know what to do with it. Yeah. They use it to post their resume and then, but I'm not getting clients via LinkedIn. Yeah, because it's not, the, if you are a service professional, you can use, and you, if you want to enroll clients, Using LinkedIn, it's not by posting your resume there that you are going to enroll clients. You have to use it as a social professional plat- networking platform where you engage with people, where you people will start to know you and the right people, you start the right conversations, some of them will become clients. But you have to know how to do so. If we apply the Book Yourself Solid system, that solid foundation to our LinkedIn profile, Whoa, things start to happen. And that is where it's the beginning. The Book Yourself Solid using LinkedIn is our signature program of our more clients, more fun um, company. That is me and these two other colleagues. And we are getting incredible uh, results there, the people that we are working with. So if the target market is in LinkedIn, the results are amazing. And that's really cool to, to, get, to hear. And I think, you know... Um, and this is me reflecting back, but it's at times I've been like, I don't get LinkedIn, you know, and it's, it's that's part of that mindset that we're talking yes. about, you know, and how simple it can be to say something like, I don't get it. Yes. Um, yet. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's, I was looking just in prepping and getting to know a little bit about you, but that, that does seem like a definite way. If you're a business services, business service, um, and even maybe a little more past that. Can you do B2C on yeah, oh, uh, b- b- Again, the rule is, does the clients are hanging out in LinkedIn? Mm-hmm. Yes. B2B usually the business has a representation in LinkedIn, so that almost for sure. And they have to be active in LinkedIn somehow. Or percentage of them have to be active in LinkedIn. So if there are people that once in a while go to LinkedIn to check their uh, their news equivalent of the news feed or read the po- um, articles on polls that is LinkedIn uh, blogging platform. Yes, you really can do B2C or B2B in LinkedIn. That's good. So it's, it's more of, um, like you were saying, if, uh, making sure your clients are there. You know, you want to be fishing in a pond that's big enough mm-hmm. that you can actually catch some fish versus trying to fish in a small pond where there's one fish yes. and 20 people trying to catch that one fish. Totally. You know? And li- so, LinkedIn is a pond big enough. It's a big, oh, a loads big of fish is there, loads of people because everybody at least they have the profile there. So you can, and sometimes because the email inbox is so crazy, 
in most people. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier to connect with people via the messaging in LinkedIn than via the email. So we have to, there is always these tricks that we can use that help us to reach out the right people. Yeah, and everybody likes to be communicated to in a different way. Yeah. Some people are like, don't ever text me. Some people are like, don't ever email me, you know, and it's, it's good to have all of those in there. So guys, if you want to know more about um, the LinkedIn program using the Book Yourself Solid uh, methodology, go to more clients, more fun. Uh, I believe Anna has a webinar uh, yes. coming up with it. So you can hop on and find out some more information about it. Yes. Now, you know, there's one thing that I have a, a little bit of a concept of. Um, early on, when we were talking about our why, getting crystal clear about some things, um, there's a certain level or a certain sense of you have to be okay with putting yourself out there. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I find so many entrepreneurs, you know, have more introverted or just, they're not used to being in the quote unquote limelight. Yeah. And so to step forward and get out from behind the computer to, to be that person that somebody can make a connection with is really scary. You know, it doesn't feel good. Totally. Um, and talk to a little bit about just this being okay to be found. And this is the self-expression, the mm-hmm. best marketing way of creating awareness out there about what you do is about being fully self-expressed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and again, if you really connect with your why, that is your fire, it's yeah. much easier to be self-expressed because you are sticking your head above the water by something that you stand for. Yeah. So it's sure. easier. So, uh, and mainly people that are not very extroverts, uh, that uh, they like, oh, I just want to keep things going. But, but if it's something that they really care about, that gives them the energy to speak about it with passion. Yeah. And that yeah. people feel that. So again, that why is fundamental for you to build your brand and your business around that because that makes self-expression more easy. And again, See it ca- careful with the blind spots. I'm not a good, I don't speak well in public. <laughs> yeah, you a lot. Again, is a skill because if you are, ask most, I'm not an, an extrovert, I will never be a good public speaker, for instance. Ask many of the public speakers that are doing great money out there if they consider themselves introverts or extroverts. <laughs> a big percentage will say, I'm an introvert. Mm-hmm. But I still can be in a, uh, speaking in front of a thousand people and uh, energize a thousand people. And again, is a skill that you can learn. So yeah. you are not a good public speaker yet. Yet. That's so true because when I tell people that I'm an introvert, they go, no. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but it's a skill that I have that I'm comfortable with, that I've practiced enough that I can get up there and just let it go and not be petrified. Not that I don't get nervous. I get nervous just like I'm human, you know? Um, That's a really, that's a really good point. So I love that designation between um, belief and skill uh, Mm -hmm. and really being careful not to put so much negative belief and it's something you can learn. Learn. And most things there is room for learning. Yeah. Yeah. So even even things that we f- we think that are g- very gen- conditional by genetics, we know that the genes turn on and off, and that has to do with the environment, is to do with the uh, nurture, has mm-hmm. to do with learning. Mm-hmm. That's really interesting. So I'm, I'm I love this idea of the blind spot, and and we'll start wrapping up here in just a minute. And we're having a couple people uh, jump on with us. So I see Cash Crunch Games, who's been with us before, and um, we always seem to have some great conversations. And he's already out there saying, you know, when you stand in front of a crowd, it's easier than to be in front of your peers. Yeah, that's why it's so easy for me to get up and speak in front of a whole bunch of people. But you man, you put me in front of ten people I know, I'm there. I'm I'm more. Ah! than I would be in front of a whole bunch of people I don't know. <laughs> so that's very true. Uh, we did have Dr. Corey jump on um, with us for a little bit, but it looks like he had to pop off and things like that. So just want to say a big shout out if you're listening to us and we're, we're talking um, all really about, you know, these powerful secrets really are, are really um, simple secrets, if you will, of ways that we can be more successful in our business. And so Anna, I almost called you Dr. Anna. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> um, just, you know, he's been sharing some great things that I've loved. But I love this concept of blind spots because I, I, I did listen to your podcast that you talked with, The um, Art of Charm, um, and you were talking about blind spots. And what's so, I guess, personal to me is because I know I have them, I just can't see them. Like I keep, I'm like, and I will come up to perfect strangers and I'm like, ooh, what do you see? You saw something. Tell me what you saw. And they get all a little yes. weaky. Yes. And I'm like, no, you don't get it. Because mm -hmm. if I can't see it unless somebody tells me. I know I can't do anything about it. And I want to do something about it because I feel it. You know, I love that. I love that term. But how do we how do we go and really um, find out what our blind spots are? And, and it's really uh, be open to feedback. Yeah. Because, yes, the definition of blind spot is that we cannot see it. That is the yeah. definition of it. So we can be aware when we have limiting language mm. uh, and we be very open to feedback, mainly the one where we automatically put our defenses mm -hmm. up. Because sometimes we are open to feedback and if we already know that we want to improve a certain area, we listen, oh, yeah, tell me more. But then there is occasions that somebody tells us something and we go, oops. <laughs> and we feel it in our body. Be aware yeah. of your body. Language and then body. If you feel like, Stephen, like a wall, okay, why did you do that? Yeah. Why that phrase or that comment made you create that? Because it's in a, a subconscious level. We, don't, we are not aware of it. Yeah. But we can become aware of our body first. Uh -huh. Why do we, do we stiffen ourselves like that and then start to see patterns? Yeah. Hmm, so around this topic, I really get very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And then depending, whatever is your favorite thing, if you like to journaling, start to journaling about that. If you have a, a mastermind group that you feel very comfortable, you can speak. Mm -hmm. I notice that in some occasions when this comes up, I feel there is any awareness, any things that you can tell me about that, that you know that you're perceiving me, that maybe I'm not seeing it. Mm -hmm. uh, so whatever, if you meditate, maybe that can be uh, some topic for your meditation, for your work, or you do some kind of internal work. So whatever, it's, there is not just one way of doing it. Yeah. But you have to learn how to work it out. I love that you shared that because I had, I, you know, in my speaking, I talk about, I, I want people to get results. And so um, you can have excuses, you can have results, but it's really hard to have both. However, sometimes mm -hmm. our excuses are really powerful. And so I do say, I'm like, if at any point in time during today's presentation, you feel like I am smoking crack, that I have no idea that that would never work. You get all that talk, talk, just write down what it is yes. that I mentioned, because it's a hot button. And oftentimes where your resistance is the greatest is your greatest opportunity. So I just oh. had to put it into the framework of like you were explaining the blind spot. So that's, mm, that's totally Awesome. So um, I want to make sure we share uh, your podcast. I know you're on a brief hiatus um, with the podcast, but there's still some good things out there. Yes. Go ahead and, and share with us just a little bit um, of what's going on and when you'll be back and, and talk about um, the podcast. So the podcast Mindset Zone that you can go to mindset.zone. So instead of .com, the domain is .zone and you will see the episodes there. And of course, in iTunes too, is uh, I, I felt that need because in the entrepreneur world and my background is psychology, but I was at least everybody was speaking about mindset and need about working our mindset and all that. But where is that space for doing that? in a way that is that no risk way. Uh, and uh, one of the, and I decided to create my Mindset Zone podcast to create these uh, experiences that people can go and listen and see things from a different perspective. Uh, allows them to, uh, like if you go to the gym to become, uh, to be more fit in the gym, you can listen to a podcast to see things from a different perspective and to make your mindset more flexible. 
And I think we had some technical problems, but yes. Amy is still here. <laughs> yes, so. it looks like we lost Leslie for a minute, our beautiful yes. host. So I'm sure she'll be back in just a minute. Yes, man. A blob is being very crazy this morning from being uh, offline for a couple of hours at least to freeze my computer before mm -hmm. we start. Yep. And now... Uh, so yeah, Leslie's coming back and here she She's is. There she again. is. And hopefully <laughs> I did I, I I'm saying I was frozen. Yes, too. It's such as the yes. loveliness Yay. of this environment is mm -hmm. that it's a little unpredictable, but I do love it because I love getting and being able to chat with people and see people and have um, you know, the chat box going on and seeing people come back to the show time and time again. That's that's it's fun for me. And that's why I really do this is yeah, more that it's cool. fun and I'm having great conversations anyway. So I might as well share them with the world um, with that. So Anna, you know, I know you need to run and that we've kept you here for a good long time, but I want to say thank you so much for um, just sharing what you've shared with us today about um, really some of the mindset tricks. I love that yet kind of tip. I'm going to start Definitely. even using that with my clients and myself. <laughs> Um, and just be like the yet monster. Yet, yet. Um, so if you missed that, guys, if yet, you're just joining yet, us in late, yet. you know, come back and listen to the replay here because there was definitely some great stuff that was here. Um, as always, we shared, uh, and I had a couple things we shared today. The first one, the moreclientsmorefun.com, which is a great LinkedIn program um, using the book yourself solid methodology and then her podcast mindset.zone um, which will be coming back with new episodes in the fall but we're happy that you were able yes. to to join us and you look so yes. lovely joining us so thank you so much for being here pleasure totally a pleasure and everybody go you all are making a difference so connect with your own Ooh, why. Love and that. Go for it. Well, guys, we are here every Monday at 1.30 uh, live on Blab, or you can catch us on iTunes at the Healthy Business, Healthy Family show. Be sure to come back next week. We have um, one of my mentors, Stella Orange, who is really a mastermind in messaging and content development. We're going to start talking about the hero's journey and really how you can use that to celebrate your clients and your marketing and um, really have this positive kind of marketing. Um, I always say, you know, I find it hard in the coaching world where we sell on scarcity and preach abundance. Well, this is kind of a way to sell abundance and preach abundance. So I'm excited about what we're going to be sharing. And that'll be next week, Monday, 1.30. So with that, guys, thank you so much for joining us. May you have a profitable and fun business week ahead of you. And until then, we'll see you next week.